One of the essential functions of a GIS is to be able to geo-reference data, which essentially means to give spatiality to non-reference data, data that might be stored as points, lines, and polygons that we don't have spatial information about, or raster images that we might download off the internet that we are able to give latitude and longitude to. So I'm looking at a, a quick site here, and this is a quick example on what we call georeferencing or georectification. And I went to the University of North Carolina, North Carolina Map Archive, and I'm gonna go to Durham County right here. And I can go and download a number of these different maps. You can see these sorted by different years for uh, Durham, North Carolina. And you can see here's a, a simple uh, road survey for Durham County. So this is a simple road survey, and I would love to bring this into my GIS and do some type of analysis with it. So you can see I can go to download. I'm going to download this as a, a large, uh, a large image. And you can see down in the bottom left hand corner, it should start to download for me. And there it is. And so I can show it in my folder here. I've already downloaded this once already. And I'm going to go to my exercises, exercise two, and I'm going to paste this. And sure, I'll just replace it. So this is a, a road survey for Durham County. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my ArcGIS Pro. And the way we do this is a little bit different in ArcGIS Pro than in previous versions. So I'm going to go to Add Data. And I'm going to look for it in my particular files right here. So I might have to navigate to this in my folders. I'll just go here for, uh, for sake of convenience. Make sure I navigate to it properly. Geography 4010, fall, exercise, and this is under exercise two. And refresh this because I've added a number of different folders here. So here's my road survey. I'm gonna click OK here because this might have this might have different bands underneath of it. I don't want to add these individual bands, so I'm going to add this JPEG image. And so up in the top here, it says map source is missing coordinate information. I don't need to add more details because I already know this. And so what I'm going to do here is go to imagery, and now I can geo-reference this thing. So I can start geo-referencing this. I'm going to fit this to my display. And so what you can see here is this JPEG image that's literally measured in pixels or inches or something like that. And I'm going to give this spatiality, essentially give this spatial information. Because I can move my mouse around here at the bottom, and you can see that it's in uh, latitude and longitude, and um, it's displayed in state plane coordinate system. So we'll show that in a second. Now this is fairly easy to do. I did flip to display, and then I'm going to add control points. So my control points are going to go from my source to my destination. So I'm, if I zoom in just a little bit here, I'm just going to match up these corners right here. Match up these corners. And so I'm going to add my control point. So from my source to my target. From my source, okay, which is going to be my unrectified imagery, to my rectified imagery. My map and I'm gonna display it a little bit here and so all I'm doing it is matching it up to the corners of my known GIS data in this case it's the outlines of the polygons but I could do it with anything I could do it on my topographic map especially if you're doing it at a high scale where rectifying data at the county level isn't gonna work you got to zoom into a much larger scale and you don't have the GIS data available for it ArcGIS Pro has utilities and data available so that you can do that. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my imagery. Add control points. Okay, so I'm gonna go from this corner source down to my destination. And finally, I can zoom in a little here. Go from here to right here. So like I said before, you might have a lot more uh, points that you have to match up, and I can match up these points over here uh, when I go to imagery. Oh, here, 
under my georeference, I can go to my control point table. And so my control point table tells me my source and my destination, so my source X, and then these are gonna be my source Y, these are gonna be in my pixels, and then my X map and my XY, which are gonna be my state plane coordinate systems. And I can go and add more of these. If I go to this drop down here, it doesn't give me, uh, it doesn't allow me to do second or third, third order where I, I shift these because I only have four points. So I need more and more control points because essentially what I'm doing is just creating a, a model that map goes from my X to my Y using as little error as possible. And this error here is what we call our residuals. We'll talk, we've talked more about these in uh, geostatistics before. And so you can see that it's, it's matched up, but as I add, I add more and more points, I'll be able to do second or thir third order here. Here I don't necessarily want to do that, uh, just for the, the sake of doing this here. So now when I'm zoomed out, this is matched up and it's ready to go. And I'm gonna click on save as new and I'm going to export it to a database. I'm just gonna call this test. Okay. This is my coordinate system. It's gonna be my NAD 83 2011 state plane. Okay, North American datum. Click export. And so now this image is going to be a georectified image of this data that I just downloaded and given XY data to using the techniques that we've looked at before. Now you can see here that this isn't very robust. I only added four control points here. Even for the, the county outline, you, you probably want to add a lot more. So as you can see, I've zoomed back out. I've removed all the images just to make sure and keep myself honest here. So I'm gonna add data. I'm going to go to my database. I'm gonna click on one of the test images that I created and exported. And now you can see that this image is completely and you know, entirely lined up with the existing GIS data. Now I can set things like transparency and whatnot. And you can see there's this color information in here, but now I can line up this, this roadmap here with my actual GIS data. A couple things to follow up with, as I said before, if you notice and you zoom in, you can see that these don't line up quite as well. So if you wanna use more control points, you can give yourself a higher higher order transformation instead of just a first order transformation, which is a, a linear essentially. And so in conclusion, we can go and, and download great GIS data layers from the you know, uh, number of different websites, University of Texas Map Collection, North Carolina, um, North Carolina Maps House through uh, University of North Carolina, bring these into a GIS and easily turn these into GIS data.